In the previous lecture, we have assumed that the random variable or the random quantities are uh, discrete, where the output is a number and it's finite. But it is not necessary to be finite. It could be infinite and the data could be continuous. So before we learn about discrete and continuous data, let's have the classification first. So a random quantity could be discrete or continuous. In discrete, the data is always finite. And in continuous, data is infinite. For example, like um, the number of heads in the toss, or maybe you are counting the number of students in a class. Though we don't know the exact data, but still we are sure that the number will always be either 1, 2, 10. We have definite values and they are integers. But when it comes to continuous data, it could be like a length of a line. Now, this could be 1 centimeter, 1.1, 1.2, 1.5. It could be infinite, doesn't it? Similarly, when you check out the class and if you're uh, measuring the weights of the students again this is continuous we are not sure it could be 68.1 or 68.5 it could be anything right it could be decimal and basically these are real numbers so we'll be studying random quantities in two classifications one is discrete other one is continuous so let's start with the discrete let's take the same example which we have used in the previous lecture the experiment was coin tossed twice and the random variable was the number of heads and here is the sample space tail, tail, tail head, head, tail, and head and head. Number of heads is tail and tail means zero. Here we have one, and here we have two. And we have learned that random variables basically give you an overall picture. We basically try to map the sample space with some numbers, and this can be used to find the probabilities. So here are the possible questions related to this experiment. The questions could be what is the probability of getting either no heads or one head? Or two heads and solving probability becomes very easy using the random variable let's see how do we do it the first one is no heads so probability of now we already have defined that random variable is number of heads here they're saying no heads so the x should be zero this is how we write it now we write it in this way to make it to have a clear representation so any random person could easily understand we are trying to find probability and the number of heads is zero and to get this, first let's list out probabilities of each of this. Now here in sample space we have four possibilities and each is equally likely. So this is 1 by 4, even this is 1 by 4, 1 by 4, 1 by 4. Now probability of x being 0 is 0. There's only one case that's tail and tail. So I can get probabilities 1 upon 4 possibilities. The next is probability of 1 head p where x equals 1. That is, if you see for one, it could be either tail and head or head and tail. So that's basically probability of tail head or probability of head tail, which is one by four plus one by four, that becomes one by two. Next one is two heads, P of X equals two. And for two, that is only head and head, that's one by four. Now, if you carefully observe, what we have done is for each of the random variable, that is x equal 0, x equal 1, x equal 2. For each case, we have found out the probabilities. And this is basically a function. You are substituting some random variable and you are getting an answer. So this can be represented as p of x, which could be either 1 by 4 or 1 by 2. And now we can map the random variable to the probability. So this is basically a function. That's a mapping of random values with some probabilities. And this particular function is called as probability mass function. PMF. And this name is very unique. It is only associated with discrete random values. Now let's formally define this probability mass function. Let's say we have a sample space with A1, A2, A3, A4, A5, and so on as the possible outcomes. And we have some random variable x with the random values R1, R2, R3, and so on. Now let's say we pick up one of this. So maybe I take R3, and maybe it's connected with few of the elements in the sample space maybe some 2, A2, A3, and A4. Now, let's say we want to find the probability of x being this R3. We can get the value of the probability corresponding to the random value as probability of, this is associated with A2, A3, and A4. So, P of A2 plus P of A3 and P of A4. That's how we write it. So, if I generalize this, I could write this as Basically, what we are doing is a summation of the probabilities corresponding to some 
outcome in the sample space where uh, this ai is belonging to the sample space s such that if you substitute that ai in the random variable we need to get this r3 so that's how we define the probability mass function it's basically summation of individual probabilities associated with the random value now when you write it in statements probability mass function the probability of getting a particular number here yeah, the particular number means the random value is the sum of probabilities of all the outcomes which have that number associated with them so basically we need to take the summation of all the probabilities which are associated with this particular number or the random value i hope you got the point now let's take one question on this concept this is the question a fair coin is flipped thrice and random variable x is number of tails tabulate the pmf as probability mass function and what is the probability of getting two tails this is the same experiment which we have discussed in the last lecture wherein we found the sample space and the associated random values so before we do this let's try to represent them back over here for reference so for this experiment this is a sample space and these are the possible random values either no tail one tail or two tails or three tails now let's also represent the probability values corresponding to these random values for that let me represent the probability for each of this sample space all are equally likely so this is 1 by 8 1 by 8 1 by 8 and 1 by 8 everything will be same now let's map the probabilities for this to fill the probabilities you can clearly see zero means there's only one possibility out of 8 so we could have 1 upon 8 and for one we have 1 2 3 3 cases upon 8 cases even this has 3 cases on 8 and this is 1 upon 8 so only two values either 1 by 8 or 3 by 8 for 0 it is 1 by 8 and even for 3 it is 1 by 8 for 1 and 2 it is 3 by 8 now let's come back to the question first one is tabulating the probability mass function so basically the same thing we'll put it in a table form the random values are 0 1 2 and 3 for 0 it is uh, 1 by 8 for 1 it is 3 by 8 for even 2 it is 3 by 8 you can see this here 1 and 2 it is 3 by 8 then 3 that's 1 by 8 and even we can represent this in the form of a graph and the graph looks like this on x axis we have the random values and on the y axis the probability this representation is also called as distributions which will be studying in the upcoming classes so you can basically represent the mass function either in the table or a graph which are is convenient for you now coming to the second part what is the probability of getting two tails the b is probability of x being 2 because x is the number of tails and they want two tails now directly look into the table 2 is 3 by 8 therefore the answer is 3 upon 